Hi, I'm Mike, and this is Mike's Road Trip. Get off the road! All right. Grand Teton National Park is one of the most scenic national parks in the world. The reason for this is that the mountain range shoots straight up nearly 7,000 vertical feet above Jackson Valley. Most mountain ranges have a large sloping base. Grand Teton, on the other hand, is a series of jagged peaks. Additionally, there are virtually no obstructions. Visitors can admire the alpine grandeur as the peaks reach for the heavens. One of the most popular and scenic areas of Grand Teton National Park is Jenny Lake. Arrive early as this area fills up by mid-morning and it's tough to find parking. Begin by driving the Jenny Lake Scenic Drive, which skirts the east shore of the lake and provides spectacular views of the peaks. There is also a trail along the shore of the lake you won't want to miss. After the scenic drive and shoreline trail, head to the Jenny Lake Visitor Center and buy tickets for the Lake Shuttle. This will take you to the other side. Lake crossings take place every 10 to 15 minutes, so don't worry if you miss the first one. After you disembark, follow the signs to Hidden Falls and Inspiration Point. We are off to Inspiration Point. Oh no, sorry, Hidden Falls first, then Inspiration Point, then the Cascade. <laughs> Three hikes today. A Jenny Lake. <laughs> this is a spectacular hike that will crisscross Cascade Creek. There are a number of waterfalls, but most impressive is Hidden Falls, which really isn't hidden. If you feel so inclined, continue up the trail to Inspiration Point for some incredible sweeping views. Welcome to Inspiration Point. It's not too bad once you've done it. But you need to bring hiking boots, seriously, because there are a few rocks and it's a little bit of climbing, not much. We were enjoying the hike so much that we continued on, which allowed us to escape the crowds a bit and really take in the awe-inspiring nature around us. So now we have reached the Cascade Trail. Cascade... Canyon. Canyon Trail. <laughs> Why do we need to go back? Because it's time and we don't have any bear spray and there are no people. Fine, I said it. And yes, I am scared because the berries are ripe and they are all around us. And it's bear country. Be bear aware. they are the Tetons behind me and today is a beautiful beautiful day it's very early well very early it's 8 a.m. right now we are hoping to get up earlier but yesterday we went to Jenny Lake and we got there by 8 uh, o'clock and the parking was full we got the last parking spot for a trailer there are only eight spots for RVs and trailers so if you want to go there you have to go really really early and then there is overflow parking on the street out of the parking and then on the main street as well and uh, you can take the boat and uh, do hikes there it, it's really really a beautiful way to spend maybe a few hours to half a day there uh, we spent there until uh, midday and then the visibility was so bad that we decided to go and find a camp, camping again. 
Each day we were at Grand Teton National Park, the visibility would diminish dramatically by early afternoon, so we tried to take advantage of the clear morning hours. Our first stop on this day was to the Snake River Overlook. Now this is a spot which famed photographer Ansel Adams took many of his most recognizable images. One of our favorite viewing areas in the Tetons was Schwabacher Landing. This is a location that truly highlights the immense beauty of Grand Teton National Park. If you're traveling north on 89, there's a small gravel road on the left-hand side with a wooden sign reading Schwabacher Landings Road. This road dead ends at the gravel parking lot. The trek to the famous vantage point is just a stone's throw away. Built beneath the mountain is another iconic area of Grand Teton. These historic structures stand in silent testimony to the stories of human exploration, pioneering settlements, ranching, and park protection. Well, tonight we are camped in a pretty cool boondock spot. We're in the Bridger Teton National Forest and we're camped right on a river. It's actually very low, so it kind of forks off in many directions, but it's, it's, uh, it's actually kind of cool because you're able to cross each little finger of the lake. And then somebody had laid a couple logs down here and so we're able to cross the first one. So what do you think of our camp spot tonight? It is pretty special. Well, you finally got your crick. May I say cricks? Did you did you count how many you got? You got? <laughs> no, there's quite a few. <laughs> All in once, and we are very close to the Tetons, so that's really nice. Well, I tell you, we're gonna love listening to the sound of these little rapids. Oh, it's gonna lull us to sleep. If you're not camping and looking for nearby hotels, Jackson Hole is just 25 miles to the south. Sandwiched between Grand Teton National Park to the north and miles of national forest in every direction, Jackson Hole has remained relatively isolated from the burgeoning travel industry due to its remote location. Even for its small size, you'll still find everything you need to have an incredible adventure at the Grand Tetons National Park. Well, that's it from the Grand Teton National Park. If you have any questions, leave a comment below. And if you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe for more road trip travel videos. So until next time, we'll see you on the road.